With an estimated 3.8 billion years of existence and evolution on Earth, it's an odd thing indeed. So how did we get here? And what would the Earth's 4.5 billion year timeline look like compressed into a normal day of 24 hours? The story begins early in the morning, around 4 a.m., with the rise of the first simple, single-celled organisms. However, these organisms are destined to spend quite some time alone. At 1 p.m., a simple cell engulfs another, creating a symbiotic relationship and the first eukaryotic cells, or cells with internal organs. At 6.30 p.m., these cells begin to form colonies, and thus the first multicellular life develops. But it isn't until 8.30 p.m. that sea plants appear, and 20 minutes later we suddenly see animal life erupt in an explosion of inventiveness. Jellyfish, the first true vertebrates, trilobites. Incredible diversification begins to take place, and just before 10 p.m., plants begin to appear on land, followed by land mammals. By 1024, the Earth is covered in carboniferous forests and the first winged insects appear. Many reptiles dominate the land with less than an hour left, but a mass extinction event allows dinosaurs to storm the scene and remain until 11.41 p.m. when they too suddenly vanish. And so begins the age of mammals. In the last few minutes, apes split from the old world monkeys, and with only one minute and 17 seconds left before midnight, humans emerge. All of the recorded human history fits within a few seconds, an individual life lasting barely an instant. All a culmination of 3.8 billion years of life. This ASAP Science video was made possible by the support of Audible.com. Are dinosaurs evidence of past life forms? Evolution can be described as a change in species over time. Dinosaur fossils are significant evidence of evolution and of past life on Earth. Charles Darwin was a famous scientist in the 1800s. He was famous because he came up with an idea that changed the way we think about life on Earth forever. The theory of evolution. Darwin loved animals and studied them all of his life. In 1831, he went on an exciting voyage aboard the ship HMS Beagle. The Beagle visited the coasts and islands of South America and Australia, where Darwin observed and collected a wide range of weird and wonderful plants and animals. When he got back to England, he analysed his collection closely. That was when his ideas about evolution started to form. Darwin had found around 15 different species of finch when he was on the Galapagos Islands. He noticed that the birds were similar to other finches in lots of ways, but their beaks were all different shapes. Darwin looked into it further. He realised that the different beaks matched the type of food available on each island. The finches who ate insects had skinny, pointed beaks, so they could pick them up better. And those that ate hard fruits had beaks that were sharp, so they could get through the skin. Darwin decided that there was only one way that this could have happened. The birds must have adapted to their environment over time. This led into another idea, which he called the survival of the fittest. In any environment, plants and animals from the same species show natural variation in their physical characteristics, such as neck length in giraffes. Darwin suggested that those plants and animals best suited to their environment are more likely to survive and pass on their characteristics to their offspring. Over a long period of time, the characteristics of the surviving members of the species will come to predominate. Confused? Take the peppered moth. In London in the early 1800s, 98% of peppered moths had light-coloured bodies. Only 2% were dark. The light moths were very happy because they were the same colour as the trees, which meant that they could easily hide from hungry birds. The dark peppered moths were easy to see and, well, eat. Then came the factories and the smoke of the Industrial Revolution. Many trees turned black with soot and suddenly it was the dark moths who were able to survive better in their environments. By 1895, the dark peppered moths made up 95% of the population. That's quite a turnaround. The process of natural selection usually takes much longer, but this is a good example of how it works. What about us humans? Good question. Darwin went on to suggest that humans share a common ancestor with modern apes. This was controversial 
because it went against the religious beliefs of many people. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection had a great impact on the world. Today, it is widely accepted as our best scientific explanation of how life on Earth works.